In this video, I'm going to discuss how to properly structure your residential assisted living in the sense of having to scale it because at the end of the day, you don't want to limit yourself to just one location and you want to have multiple locations. So if you're interested, make sure to stick around. What's going on, everyone? I hope you're all doing well. If you're new here, my name is Serge. Welcome to the channel. To all my reoccurring viewers, thank you so much for all the love and support that each and every single one of you have shown this channel. I do greatly appreciate it. If you have not yet, make sure to go check out the God Made Podcast on all streaming platforms and make sure to check out Legion Assisted Living Academy and Legion Assisted Living Advisors in the description, in the links down below. Also, I do offer one-on-one -on -one consultation calls, so if you're interested in that, make sure to check that out in the description down below. Feel free to go check out Valley ALF Ventures. Uh, the website will be down below. This is for all you passive investors out there looking at, to get into this industry without having to get into the sense of finding the property or even doing the operations. We do offer uh, passive investors all those options, also operators as well. So you can go check out the website down below. Make sure to go through the questionnaire depending on which category you fall in. And so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the topic of this video. Now, this is something that a lot of people have been asking me about, how to properly scale your business, how to get into multiple locations, how do you do that with limited capital, and if you do want to bring on investors to help you with the operational side and not just the real estate side, how do you do that and how do you go about doing that? And also how to structure it and get somebody in there to help you potentially manage this and be as hands off as possible in the sense that you're not working in your business, you're working on your business. And so that's what I'm going to talk about. So the first thing I do want to talk about is scaling up because a lot of people aren't sure how to do that, and how to go about that. And so the first thing you want to do, obviously, is get into your first location, whether that is leasing, purchasing that place, or even doing some form of lease option. If you are interested in that, that's also another option that you can do. But getting into that first crucial location is going to be your kind of uh, essentially it, it, it's going to either set you up for success or actually uh, be a failure. So location is everything when it comes to finding your first place and every other place after that. But that first experience of opening up your first residential assisted living is going to be crucial to your success. And so in order to do that, there's a lot of videos that I've already covered on how to do that, but getting that first location is important. Once you learn the in and outs of that first location and what it takes to run this kind of business, and once you've kind of done all the legwork and you know the ins and outs, at that point, you can start scaling up if you choose to. And so scaling up to that next location, depending on what uh, what's available on the market at the time, you can either, you'll probably be more comfortable at this point to be able to uh, possibly purchase something, right? And even sometimes there's like package deals. So you could get even two or three homes within one deal, right? And so when you do that, that's an easy way to scale to multiple locations that have existing businesses in them. At that point, you want to just purchase these existing ones because now you know what to look for. Now you know that you can go in there and add some type of value in that location, uh, whether it's increasing rates, whether it's implementing a better system, whether it's uh, maybe you have your landlord or if you purchase the locations, you can do some type of value add of adding more beds or units in that location. But the one crucial thing is that you have to have a foundation of great employees, great administration. So depending on your state and your regulations, you most likely will want to have a manager. Like for instance, here in the state of Arizona, a manager can only manage two care homes. You can't manage any more than that. And so what you can have and what I've heard other people do uh, when they scale up and they have multiple locations like this, you know, they have a manager for each two locations. Let's say you have four locations. So you have two managers and then you either manage those two managers or you have someone else manage those two man managers and you ultimately uh, manage that person that manages those two managers. So you guys can kind of understand that type of structure. It's kind of like a hierarchy structure. You have your man, you have your caregivers, then your managers, then your uh, 
like whatever you want to call them, they're the ones that manage the managers. And then there's you as the owner. So you only really communicate directly with the person that manages your managers. And then sometimes you can even uh, communicate with your managers at the actual home. So when you're scaling up, that's how you got to think about it. You have to constantly be putting people in places where you're going to be more focused on the business and they're going to be the ones on the day to day. And so I was getting asked a lot about how to go and do that because a lot of people can't seem to grasp that. But when you're first getting started, you're going to be wearing all those hats. You may end up having to be the caregiver. You may end up having to be the manager on your first location. You may end up having to do everything yourself, right? So you're the owner, manager, and the caregiver. You're all three of those. So you're constantly having to do that. So you're the one doing all the chores. You're the one doing all the medication administration or activities of daily. It's a lot in the beginning. And that's why a lot of people can't seem to get out of that rut when they get that first location because they get caught up in wearing all these different hats. But then eventually you have to keep reinvesting into your business. So all those profits that you're getting, when you get those profits, you want to keep reinvesting in people. So at one point you eventually want to hire a caregiver. So you eliminate that hat. Eventually, you want to hire a manager, so you get rid of that hat, right? So now you got those cover those bases covered on your first location. Now, as you move forward, that is how you're going to continue structuring everything. Uh, your second location, depending on how you choose to go about it, whether it's you purchasing an existing one or whether it's you uh, starting it from scratch, moving up. Not a lot. Not everyone has to start a, a care home from scratch. It's highly recommended that you go and buy an existing one. The there's pros and cons to doing both. The thing that I understand and what I've experienced is that starting from scratch, you're gonna learn a lot more skills. You're gonna have a lot more knowledge about what to look for when you're buying an existing one. Whereas if you're going to buy your existing one as your very first one with already a staff established in there, right? You may have a manager. And caregivers in there already and you really don't have to do much it's more of a turnkey operation in those cases people seem to take advantage of you because of the fact that you're new you have no idea what to look for you don't really know if there's operational expenses that are overinflated or they're overinflating the rates in that certain uh, business or whatever the case may be it's really hard and a lot of people seem to take advantage of that and it isn't something that I'm fond of uh, when new people get into the industry and they just choose to buy an existing one because you really don't know what to look for unless you hire a consultant and even having a broker. Uh, some brokers just want a quick commission, so they're not willing to just tell you everything to sway you away from obviously the deal and they essentially want you to purchase it regardless if it's good or bad for you. Not everyone's like that, but that's something to be aware of. Um, but also, you just want to keep that in mind. At the end of the day, it's not always the best thing to buy an existing one until you have that experience. Because if you go into an existing one and you really don't know how to operate this thing, you can run it into the ground within six months of purchasing it. Not financial advice. I'm not obviously uh, somebody who can counsel you on that, but it is something to keep a, a keep in mind and also just be aware of because at the end of the day it is your money it is your investment it is your time and effort that is going into it so you do want to keep that in mind just want to put that out there and so for investors looking to help people into the operational side that's a whole nother thing there's a whole nother thing that goes into that and you want to make sure whoever you're investing into understands the operations is a great operator has a great track record of being an operator and being able to turn these things into profitable businesses because otherwise you're investing in something you're not sure right you're investing in the person not in the operation because the operation may be good but the person running it essentially could run that thing into the ground so if you are an investor looking to help somebody get into the operational side of things or uh, you know whatever the case is whatever your goals are Keep that in the keep that in the back of your mind. So at the end of the day, anybody is able to do this. Anybody is able to scale this. But you just need to have those fundamentals of how to properly operate these things, how to properly structure them. Because if you don't, it's not going to be a happy ending for who whoever starts this, whoever is watching this video and chooses to uh, go about doing this. I'm not 
the one to just give you this cookie cutter uh, type of stuff and just really fluff up everything. At the end of the day, it's a risk and there's risk to everything that you do in this life. And this is a business that can be risky if you don't know what you're doing and could end up very badly for you if you choose to not educate yourself on it and choose to not hire the right people to run your business and help run your business. So with that being said, hopefully this was insightful. Hopefully this gave you guys some more information about how to properly scale this thing. And even for investors, if that is something you guys are looking to do is just to passively invest in an operator to operate these things. That's another way to do it as well. Get somebody to completely manage these things for you. You know, that's a that's a good way to do it. So with that being said, thank you so much for all the love and support that you have all shown this channel. I do greatly appreciate it. And if you have not yet, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and I will talk to you all in the next video. God bless.